I'm going to ask you an interview question that everybody hates. We all hate this question. Oh, boy. But this is the elevator pitch question. How would you describe your band's musical style? <laughs> I mean, I have to say it's 70s UK punk. I describe it as needing well, more country. Needing more country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me and these guys. I'm Josh, and today my guests are a traveling band of punks roaming the land from Chicago to Oklahoma to California and anywhere else they can. Self-described as music for punks, drunks, scumbags, and assholes of all sorts, they're hitting Las Vegas October 7th and 8th, so definitely check their social media for where they'll be playing and, you know, what they're all about. Known also as A4A, please welcome to the channel Anarchy for Assholes. Hi hey guys! Yay! Hey. For those of you that don't know the band, thanks for watching, but go ahead and introduce yourselves, tell them what you do in the band. I'm Drunk Guy, I sing. I'm Genevieve, I'm the drummer. Dustin, I play bass. Rob, guitar. Christoph, I guess I'm kind of lead guitar. First off, let's talk about where will you be playing in October in Las Vegas? Uh, we're playing the Dive Bar on the 7th of October. The 8th of October is a private show and you can go to the Anarchy for Assholes Facebook and get the address. We right haven't on. actually posted that yet. We'll be posting that story. Yeah, the whole tour will be posted on our page as soon as three or four more dates are confirmed. Yeah, and I'll make sure to make an event that has them all listed at once. Well, awesome. Yeah, we're two in Vegas, 10 in California, Reno, Salt Lake City, Denver, Albuquerque, back here. I'm also going to be doing, uh, with my uh, own band, I'm going to be doing the two Vegas dates, like opening up, doing a short set. So, yeah. it's Christoph in Vegas. Everybody yeah, come that. on out, ladies. <laughs> come on out, ladies. <laughs> Uh, Actually, he only likes midget. Oh, really? <laughs> <Stop. laughs> now, I, I assume all you guys have played the dive bar before. The di no, we didn't. In 2019, we played uh, double double down. down, double down, and I played there. We played there. In Ninety-eight. Yeah, the dive bar is actually different than you remember it. I can tell you that much. Uh, I recently did a review of it. And um, it's like I did a review after quarantine and I went in and I was like, oh, my gosh, a lot of things changed. Uh, Double Down. Actually, I was just there a couple weeks ago. It's really not any different whatsoever. More stickers. That's about it. I heard there's a lot more a bigger crowd. going. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like every night, every night it's packed. Um, they are. Like the only good thing COVID did is make people realize that yeah. you're gonna miss shows. Yep. Um, yeah. Right one thing. Kind of two years worth of show in one summer. Yeah. And that, well, not only that, but the bands when they hit the stage, they're just like, "This is our first gig in 18 months," and they're just unleashing, just like you know, boom. No, no talking in between songs. We're like, we're gonna cram every song we can into this 45 minutes or whatever it is they have, and they're just going for it, and you know. 60 year old guitarist was jumping on the tables and <laughs> playing in your, your face, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah, um, all right, well, cool. So, uh, I got cirrhosis over the pandemic, there'll be no jumping going on. Yeah, uh, well, um, definitely, yeah, listen, listen to the doctors on that one. <laughs> um, all right, so how long have you each been doing music individually? Since 86, 87. Anybody else? I've been playing in a band since, what, 93, 94. My first band was actually with this guy. <laughs> uh, I've only been playing drums since I started playing in Anarchy Purple, so I used to sing only. 
then I had to learn to play the drum because we couldn't find a drum. So here I am. I bought her a one hour video and a drum set and it's been eight years. Yeah, guess what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. I love loving music and I love music. Many years. Not as long as these guys. We're not as old as these guys. <laughs> I've been I've been playing in various things since I was uh since I was a kid. Uh thirty at least thirty years now I've been doing shit. If you if you don't if you don't count fucking, you know, violin and piano recitals, I've been doing it oh, at least yeah. thirty years. I, I joined my first band when I was twenty and I'm thirty eight, so that long, I guess. Robert, I'm hiding back there. I know I am. <laughs> I got my first guitar in eighty five, first power chord. I look back. Been in a handful of bands, probably the coolest one. Hey, He's right on. For the record, <laughs> for the record, I definitely count all the violins and everything because I, I started music at seven years old, piano lessons, and that thing barely gets any use back there. Uh, the, I, 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 then I, I can't even, dude. I went to Oklahoma public schools. They taught math, not math. <laughs> <laughs> don't, expect me, don't expect me to count the years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, does my tennis racket count? Air guitar. <laughs> Uh, all right so from when i was like five give him a beer he'll play some elvis there you go yeah all right so from that question i'll move on to how long have the five of you been anarchy for assholes me and her this, this this... me and her for seven years christoph two years and these well, no, guys, I, I six in, months. We toured six in months. 2019. Hey, so, like, I've been up, in it baby? since 2018. Uh, yeah, three, up, three, up, in three years. Again, everybody's missing a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, three years. That's true. Right. Yeah, in the history books. We've had 15 members in this band already. I know. It made it very hard to figure out who was in your band. I was looking <laughs> like... There'd be a review of, of something with like these five people, and then there'd be a review of something with like these four people, and you t you two would be like you know still there in the list. I'd be like, I, I do. Uh, I, I I got a couple other bands of my own, so sometimes booking and stuff. So I they go on without me now sometimes instead of you know I, I don't want to hold them back and be like, well I'm busy that night, so no you can't play it. So now that we got another guitar player, they go off and do it as a four piece without me sometimes. Right on. Uh, so, so if you don't mind, I want to talk about musical influences. Uh, what was that first early musical influence that made you think, I want to do that? I mean, Elvis. <laughs> Not to lie, I can't lie. Like so my parents played and they gave me the tennis racket and a beer. And I pretend I was Elvis. My earliest shit was probably Pete Floyd, but that was my parents. Uh, you know, all those bands, they were like hippies and shit. They they always made sure music was in my life. So like, man, I've been listening to music before I wanted to play it, and I always wanted to. My cousin was a rockabilly and country singer named Merle Kilgore, and he was my biggest personal influence. And then, uh, you know, I used to listen to the Ramones and all that shit too. But then one day I went out uh, buying records at a garage sale, and I stumbled across Fear the album and. Uh, Oh. Changed my fucking life. <laughs> You're the record. Yeah, I fucking love that one. Great one. Oh, he was our boss. Ramon. Yeah. Oh, y'all talking about punk rock? I hate the Ramon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too I mean, bad, Vegas. I like the Jersey <laughs> Yeah. Like, as far as I don't the hate them. I just don't find like it. Them. Um, he just likes to talk shit about them. How about you, Jen? What's your influence? What was your first musical influence? Uh, I was like dance club kid, so I listened to The Cure and all that stuff until I got into punk rock. But probably the first band that made me think like, hey, I could do that too was Kraft. And hearing, you know, a punk band with a female singer, so I was like, what? It seems doable. So... Right on, yeah. 
And that's fair enough. Um, I, I'm a, I was born in, in the 70s, but I'm really a, a musical product of the 90s, or the 80s and 90s. So by that time, I was getting a lot of influences that was all over the map. So, you know, of course, the 90s, you know, you had grunge and you had, you know, metal light, I'll call it, <laughs> like old Metallica and stuff. But, um, but I grew up listening to Kenny Rogers, Crystal Gale, you know, a lot of the country and Western. And I, it's, it's there. Like my original music, yeah, uh, my original music, you, if you listen hard, you'll, you'll hear like, there's, yeah, he heard, he heard country when he was growing up. And I did my best to distance myself from it. But I never heard, I didn't yeah. really hear a lot of punk until the 90s or 2000s. Um, and just because of the oh, world I was in. And uh, always trying to figure out what my guitar tone is. And I just, I, I play it, I, I got it set up like an old fucking like 50s fucking country guitar. And then I just throw on a bunch of heavy distortion. <laughs> nice. All right. So from influences, I want to move to um, show memories. What's your favorite show memory of being in this band? And it could be like really bad. Somebody went to jail or whatever. Or it could be something really, really good, or, or you know, whatever you want to throw at me. That's, that's a question. Yeah. And this band. We haven't yeah. played a lot of shows with this lineup yet. Oh, C pandemic. Was. Okay, you, you know what? Fair enough. I forgot. Let's expand the net here. Let's open, let's broaden the net. Just your favorite show memory of playing a gig. Well, it, I'd have to say like when when we moved here ten years ago to Oklahoma, I, she was in Portland, I was in NorCal, and I was in a band there, and we moved here, and uh, my buddy from Chicago knew I had all these songs, and was like, come to Chicago, or he came to Oklahoma, we recorded five songs, and he's like, come to Chicago, and we're going to do 18 shows in 20 days. And that's how this band started. I went to Chicago, we did 18 shows, and was like, came back and then got her the drum set and started finding not Chicago people. Local members. So I mean, like, right off the bat, the band started with an 18 day tour. Right on. I never left Chicago. That's awesome. I mean, you could, I don't think you can pull off an 18 day tour in Vegas and still call it a, a tour. <laughs> but you could definitely do it in Chicago. I guess you could get away with it. Yeah. Maybe. It's no. big enough in Texas, but yeah. in Chicago, we played 18 shows and like was in a different neighborhood every night, you know? Right. Chicago's a big. Uh, anybody else? Favorite show memory? I played so many fucking shows. I don't remember. Yeah, I played a lot shit. of shows with different bands, bro. Like, there's none that stick out as just either a, like abysmally bad or or like it was amazing. I can't believe we got to do that or nothing. I'll, the, the last the last uh, Anarchy for Asshole show at the Rat Hole uh, was my favorite Anarchy for Asshole show because that was like the first time that I was there. I felt like we didn't. Before suck. I joined the band, I was there actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was bouncing. Around. He yeah. Was, like, a cool. I was loved it. Yeah, yeah, you because yeah. you uh, yeah. you played yeah. the, with oh, the, you play the, the chime in real quick. Yeah. Like yeah. that was like pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Right before the pandemic, I got we, we I got plenty of memories of seeing with, this guy live. Uh, festival with MDC and who was the other one? I can't remember now. Uh, it's like the Arkansas Punk Festival Verbal weekend, abuse. Verbal okay. Abuse, MDC, yeah. and I mean, I've known that Dave and show. MDC since the 80s, but man, it was so awesome. it's cool to see them, you know, we got to play with them. We also kicked off uh, our, our tour to uh, Los Angeles and back, we kicked that off opening for the mentors. Yeah, that was... Well, it was fun though. Sometimes he doesn't know who we are, but well, I, I somehow he time. just remembered all five bands I've been in <laughs> since I was 16. Yeah, Penn. Were you in Box Club? No, no, neither. I was in Box Yeah, Church. okay. But Hate Farm, when you guys took off for tour, that uh, played that man. 
expansion and all that stuff. You guys took off and you had all your demo tapes on top of the fan. I heard this. Okay. <laughs> and um, first show, I, we left all our merchandise on one. the van and drove away. <laughs> and uh, I threw it in my safe. And, uh, yeah, you guys sold like what? three demos and all the rest of them. Hey, you know what? Some highway though? somewhere. Yep. Do you still have that? <laughs> we were watching uh, this Kurt Cobain uh, special yeah, the yeah. other day. Oh, yeah, it's up online. It's and online. I was it's like, man, me, that bar looks okay, familiar. What was yeah, the bar's yeah. name? The off-ramp. The off-ramp in Seattle. And because when we played, they're like, yeah, Kurt Cobain made this place famous. You know, like they were surprised we got a show there for the band Hate Farm. And then when they were showing that 90s Kurt Cobain thing, it was the same bar, the offering in Seattle. And uh, another band, the Boxcar Children, we played with guys, my band, Sanity. We played with guys in Shawnee. Yeah. Some park that with the little fun. amphitheater. Is that... Was that, that the, was that the one where you spray painted my shorts? <laughs> yes, probably so. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I had the little stencil and stuff. Yeah. But Josh, this other singer in Boxcar Children, wrote "Fuck the Pigs" uh, on the back of the. It's like arena and stuff. And here come the cops rolling up on the grass. <laughs> I remember that. And man, I just I folded, man. I folded up to the Mexican <laughs> restaurant and got me a beer. And uh, yeah, man, I think they might have arrested him. I don't know. It was a lot of fun. Oh, that was a long cheers. time ago. That All was right. a fun show. We don't, we, we try not to be so crazy Ooh, now that we're in our like 50s. A little older and a little But slower. yeah, back in the 90s, a lot of shows ended in a riot. <laughs> yeah. Mean, we're, we're very, we're very yes. political. And, you know, Nazis weren't going to come into our shows and get away with it. You know, you weren't going to come in and start talking about women or, you know, we were a political punk band. So, I mean, if you were doing something wrong, we were going to, you know, you're out of the club. <laughs> you're done. So, we, we did it for a lot of years. We've had a pretty rough name. But now, you know, fifties, forties, <laughs> the music slowed down a little bit, you know, but I mean at fifty one, thirty three years into this, I can't sing like I did when I was twenty. You know, I can't you do, do it that right. fast anymore. And pretty much everything. I'm sure the bass player would love to play fast. I play what what's needed and I'm, I'm really thankful to be in this band yeah. straight up you got some brown uh, I remember <laughs> no I remember and you could ask her about it when I got the text I was like oh my god ah! like it, it was just like such a like like I was like damn like they really want me to play with them hell yeah I'm gonna do this shit it was perfect timing too because you're yeah, a long time band you were in just split up yeah my metal well, band this split guy up. it was at the same show Robert he told his old lady, he's like, I'm going to play in this band, watch. And the next day, <laughs> we got a hold of him. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to play with you guys. Yeah. And he quit the band he was in that night to be in our band. Is that what happened? Dang. Is that what happened? <laughs> That's kind of what happened. Yeah. It's That's like, because I remember you already being in this band and then me going and jamming with this, the band you supposedly quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my band had broken up, and then they were like, they found out because I played a show with them with my band at a benefit. And I don't think your band and broke I was like, up That's until the they heard you play <laughs> And then you know, a couple years later, like, yo, we're going like, yeah, I want to join. Yeah, there's a lot of music in Oklahoma, but a lot of the people don't leave. You know, they don't go on tour. And like, yeah, if I'm going to be in a band, you. So you got to go on the road, you know. That's you know, Otherwise, if you just want to be a bar band, well, this isn't the band for you. That's, you know? And that's really the case with a lot of musicians in Oklahoma in general. Like, I've got two different drummers that I work with outside of this band, and I can't get either of them to go on tour with us, so I'm actually flying in my old drummer from Oregon to fucking come play with That's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking stupid. 
musicians. Musicians, yeah. yeah. I'm a singer, not a musician. He's that You're guy. that guy. Yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> okay, well, um, moving on. Wanted to talk a little bit about... I'm going to ask you an interview question that everybody hates. We all hate this question. Oh, boy. But this is the elevator pitch question. How would you describe your band's musical style? <laughs> I mean, I have to say it's 70s UK punk. I describe it as needing more, more country. Needing more country. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, bands I, the main bands I listen to is like from the 70s UK, so it just automatically comes out. The yeah. drones, I think we sound yeah. a little bit like the drones, maybe. Yeah, I'm so Times like probably style. my all time favorite. If I, you know, had to pick out of all the records, like Sham 69's got the most and the best. And, yeah, you know, I've listened to some of your stuff and I definitely was like, oh, these are old school punks. Like, <laughs> not, there is, you know, they're be, between what your music was is and just your, your, your social media. I was like, these are old school punks who do not put up with well, what you said. You don't put up with any of the crap that people that don't know might associate with the punk scene, like Nazis and, you know, uh, misogynists, you know, talking about, you know, treating women like property or whatever. And I'm like, no, that that's that's not that's not what punk's about. Nobody's got time for that. Yeah. I just want to play music. And have to yeah. I, I came up. This is also about as best trying to change the world like just a little bit well, right i'm trying to change the world a whole bunch <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we, we're definitely not the dress up punk type i mean what what i what you see is what you get yeah yeah and hopefully you like it mm -mm. If you yep. don't. <laughs> <laughs> buy a record anyway <laughs> Um, and speaking of which, I will definitely have a link down in the description for your, uh, you know, your your latest uh, album release. Yeah, it's in the works. <clears throat> in the That's works. all I'm gonna say. Well, I meant I, mean, I meant whatever is currently available. Yeah, well, there's all the stuff on Bandcamp or Spotify, but. That's it's all, all different members. Yeah, that's it's that's all nothing besides with, me. That's nothing with us three on them. Yeah, we There's, did uh, three songs in Chicago two months ago that were like stopping around. You know, yeah. it'd be nice to get on a label. I right. hear a lot. I don't care if it's a broke label, but <laughs> someone that, that, that will do the promoting. Yeah. So I'm not the one doing it. Because this is yeah. all out of his fault. Yeah. Well, you, know. you know, just right. setting up shows. It's like I live, we live in on 50 acres, like 50 miles west of Oklahoma City. Reception is screwy. <laughs> you know, I mean, it takes me 20 minutes to buffer to email someone. And I'm em emailing 100 clubs a day to get three shows, you know. Yeah, know the feeling. All right, uh, moving on. I wanted to talk about gear, and I thought we'd start with the drummer because they're the gear whores. <laughs> First, you get a trash can yeah. lid. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's kind of where we started, but I've got a PDP piece right now, and I'm dragging my feet about buying cymbals forever because they're not cheap, and I finally got some, and they sound amazing, and I'm super mad that I didn't do it sooner. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll play whatever's there. Basically, the I'm not picky, but the set I have now is, is decent. I like it. It works for me. I'm not that much of a gear nerd, so. So just the one drum set? Yeah, just the one. You don't have one in your kitchen and your living room? And... No, we, we, we sell the old one when we buy the new one. Yeah, that's the, the plan, or we give it to somebody. Yeah. 
My grandson got hurt. My grandson's three, and every time he's over, he's playing the drums. I mean, three-year-old, and he's he can play. He's normal, like keeping a steady beat. So we gave him the old keep Yamaha. He got the PDP off of. I buy stuff off the internet, real cheap. On mm-hmm. these marketplaces, and like, if you're the first one to call and you're the first one there, it's like you get a like, you know, a killer deal. Like, we paid one hundred and seventy dollars for her PDP set, but then it came with a DW five thousand, a DW five thousand double. Five Dance. symbols, five boom stands, like Damn. two bags of sticks. Yeah. The rubber pads for 170 bucks. Yeah, and I was like, well, how about 150? And the guy's like, uh, maybe tomorrow if it don't sell. But then I looked it up and the five drums were $999 without all the hardware and i was like we'll be there in 20 minutes yeah i mean at some point you're just like we'll take it yeah, yeah. so I, I mean that's what i was doing for a while just buying marketplace stuff and then reselling it because i'd be the first one on there in the morning and i had cash so yeah. i go buy it resell you know, a couple hundred bucks here and there don't hurt. I was doing yeah. sound at a metal bar, so that was a hundred bucks tonight. Whatever else I did was my business. Right. Uh, well, say since we're talking, since since you're talking right, right now, what sort of gear do you rock on stage? I mean, well, as a singer, whatever they got. But <laughs> I did. I mean, I just switched over from analog. To and like you know the stacks to these power speakers now, you know for years I've heard all good bad about the powered speakers, <clears throat> but to me it's like there's no way this speaker is three thousand watts, you know being a powered speaker because I've got to carry eighteen you know amps EQs. My 18s, my 15s, my horns, my 12s, my monitors. But now I bought three of these powered speakers and they're just as loud and sound way better than the old Frankenstein gear. When you want to show off, you know, you bring out Frankenstein, but I have done sold Frankenstein. <laughs> uh, give me a second. I want to show you something. I work out because it ain't getting yeah. lighter. <laughs> well, that too. I thought I didn't have very long to live, and I was like, I can't leave Frankenstein with her. <laughs> like I'll every speaker weighs three hundred pounds, and she weighs a hundred. Yeah, well, I, I just... I'll get the powered ones she can carry with her if I die. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I designed that shirt because I was realizing, like, I was realizing I need to hit the gym if I want to keep carrying this stuff. It's it's not getting lighter. <laughs> yeah. I do like that powered now. I would never go back to carrying that rack mount around and oh, yeah. all uh, that noise. I, you were talking about going from, like, analog to digital. It's not quite the same, but I, I, had, I used to have a, um, I used to have a Mackie uh, PA head. Just, just heavy, yeah. heavy, heavy PA head, old school, and it, it, it literally. The, my first interview, I was going to like set up and have like microphones and everything for him because they were going to perform here in front of the guitar wall, and it, I went to turn it on, and I guess I hadn't used it in a while, and it, it just decided that I'm dead. I smelled ozone. I was like, oh, okay, yeah. and I just recently got um, a, a Behringer mixer. Like after a couple of years, I just finally bit the bullet, got it. It's like this big. You know, it's one of those flat little mixers. Yeah. Does everything, and it's powered. It's got a couple power ports, uh, uh, inputs, and I'm just like, why didn't I? It's a hundred bucks. Why didn't I spend this? You know, years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So well, um, that was the thing with powered speakers. They're not cheap, you know. Right. But talking about 500 bucks for one speaker. It's like, man. Yeah. Now but, this won't this won't work with like you know I wouldn't I wouldn't connect this to a, a, a half stack. There's just something about the aesthetic of a little yeah. little mixer you know board on top of a half stack. It's not the same as an amp head, but yeah. you know I don't need that. I, I for what I do, you know some yeah, yeah. someday maybe I might need it again, but we'll see. Um, who, who anybody else? Uh, what are you currently rocking? Yeah. Oh I'm, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom while they talk okay, about so guitar. Are here? I get I get my I get my bass guitar and I tune it up real nice. And then I, I take it, you know, plug it into my amp, <laughs> and then I play it. <laughs> nice. No, I'm not trying to be shitty. Like, that's literally all I do. Like, I'm, I might do the Whitley walls on the fucking thing. Like, ooh, maybe this, maybe this would sound better. And then I'll turn this knobby. I'll turn that knobby. Like, oh, that's nice. I see. And then I'm like, hell yeah, we're ready to rock, bro. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty tight much tight Lit. Uh, do you want to maybe throw some you know brand <laughs> names out there wow huh <laughs> so is it my turn yet no oh, yeah let's go crystal let's get your run down, <laughs> <laughs> so uh for this man <laughs> um I, I play, uh, the guitars that I use are uh, Ibanez, uh, the hollow bodies, um, Ibanez R4 hollow bodies. Uh, I use the semi-hollow. Um, I, uh, I use pig hog cables. I use, uh, what else do I use? Dean Markley strings, coffin case uh, gear, PV amps. And uh, I, I, I would tell you exactly what I use, but... This guy has been trying to ape my sound. Oh, it's a right, secret. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know he, if I I don't know if I should tell you exactly. Put the right. fucking I towel over after. his over his fucking hand. Just turn your voice. <laughs> you, you know, it used to be a joke, but now it's like not funny, bro. I, I, I only do it in front of him. <laughs> Literally, check me out on stage or anywhere else. I only oh, do I it when he's in the room. It's just wet towel. I know. I know. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I use a. Uh, a PV stereo chorus 212. Um, I, I, I've set up like country, like like classic 50s country gold, you know, just have it set up like old school country. And then I fucking, uh, I got the DOD pedals that I use. Uh, for this one, the main one I use is my DOD death metal distortion pedal. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, I like my gear. <laughs> I could go on about it, but <laughs> we already thing, listened right? to him talk for 12 hours and he doesn't even have gear. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, are we getting Rob back? What? Uh, yeah. Rob's got his pee pee in his hands. Oh, boy. I think Rob me. pretty much plays anything you give him. Yeah. You got okay. anything? You brought a broken guitar to practice twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did bring a broken guitar to practice. <laughs> The very first time. Actually. It's still fucking played though. We like, duct tape. Yeah, it, it was duct tape on it. That's great. I'm actually playing it now. Yeah. <laughs> it's still, it's still working. It's not broken no more. No. Duct tape adds a certain, you know, harmonic resonance. <laughs> it does. It works. Right on. Um, I probably, I probably know the answer to this before I even ask it. But does anybody have any dream gear that they're lusting after that they want to, you know, that thing that's on your. Someday you'll be mine, Wayne's World kind of moment. My buddy Dave Klein had a fucking Ampeg eight, eight, eight fucking fat, fat cap for like three hundred bucks, but I couldn't fucking afford to go on tour, man. I just want—I wanted the biggest fucking Ampeg fucking cab in the world. Yeah, you and everybody, every other bassist. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's I, it. I refuse to touch a Gretsch guitar because they're so pretty and they sound so good. I'm afraid that. They're, they're also way out of my price range. I'm afraid if I touch one that I, I'll hate everything that I own already and refuse to play again until I get one. So I just pull yourself, yeah. So I just don't even touch them because yeah. I know, yeah. I know, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, guys, I don't know, I don't even want to play anymore. <laughs> all all like six of these drum? guitars, all six of these guitars are under two hundred bucks. Like I just, I know me. Yeah. <laughs> if I take a show pony to, you know, a trailer queen yeah. to to a to a show. It's it, something's gonna happen. 
<laughs> what? I was uh, I was at I was at my friend's uh, music shop a couple months ago. I was taking around on some of his acoustics. And I, I was like, dude, so what is the difference between this twelve hundred dollar acoustic guitar and my two hundred dollar acoustic guitar that you're working on now? And he said, honestly. I don't have any fucking idea. And I said, you know, I think I know what the fucking difference is. I'm afraid to play this one as hard as I play that one. <laughs> you Pretty know? Much. So I don't think I'd want an expensive guitar because I'm not going to beat the hell out of it like I will the $200 one. Yeah, one you of know? those guitars has the had my, one of those guitars has had my drummer's uh, blood on it from him playing because he just decided yeah. to get up and play at a gig. And and I was like, thanks, fucker, thanks, thanks, so thank you so much for bleeding on my guitar. I appreciate it. There's there's blood on my guitars, my, my basses, and my drum. Hey, that's memories, <laughs> bro. That's memories. Yeah, but it wasn't my I blood. Played bass or guitar. Yeah. When I play bass or guitar, yeah, I hit every blood. string, <laughs> and this all is bloody by the end of the night. But I did. I found an old silver tone at a thrift store. And I still can't find it online. It's like, what, what's that body style? Les Paul? It's like a square. Oh, my idea. silver phone you haven't seen it really? No, I don't pay attention. I mean, it looks like a Les Paul. Yeah. But it's like a 60s <laughs> silver tone. Man, I love that thing. I haven't oh, seen that one. so easy. I don't own it. Thinking about them in it, Oops. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a silver tone, the black and white yeah, one there. Tone more than but it's just a strap on. It's it's a cheapy, you know. I don't even. I think I spent 150 on it, maybe. At the thrift store, I was like, oh, this thing won't go in tune. I'll give you 75 bucks for it. Okay, from the highs of dream gear to the lows of losing gear. Has anybody lost any gear at a show or something? What's your sob story? Just like power cables and shit. Yeah, I mean, doing sound at a metal bar sucks because they break all your microphones. And <laughs> cords. And cords. And for some reason, they think banging the mic on their heads is going to be cool. <laughs> and then, like, not knowing that you can't go in front of the PA with the microphone. It's like, don't you guys practice? You know you can't put a mic in front of a PA speaker. Squeal! All you're doing is blowing feeding back. But, you know, that's what happens when you're doing sound. Yeah, been there, done that. I don't know. Oh, you got a broken guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Still, yeah. still hanging in. But I used People to are always fucking up my mic stands or stealing my mic stands, so I'm getting sick of that shit. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we've never had bad luck on tour. Well, tapes. The tapes, yeah. There was that, but... I mean, we had a van breakdown one time and we panhandled like $800 in Berkeley. Some guy gave us like 600 bucks cash. Went to a cash machine, was like, good, you guys are stupid. Up, you got a show, here's 400. And then, like everybody else, we came up with like 800 bucks in the afternoon, bought another car, and kept on tour. Now, wow. Standridge, the tour he was talking about, was another band and all their money, their equipment, their van. And at the last minute, they didn't want to go, but they gave us their band or their van the money, and we went on tour, and of course, you know, Western Union, the quickest way to owe your friend's money. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we've had Western Union sponsor our tours the throughout the year. Well, that's that's you know, still, though, that, for that band to, to help you out like that, respect. That's, that's oh, really yeah, awesome. No, it was just some random guy on the street. Oh. Shooting tie guy in Oakland, and He's like, dude, I know what it's like, you know, be stuck. And he's like, y'all, Yo, you're a band. And he's like, man, I'm not broke, you know. And just pulled out Chris Pondridge and gave it to the, we had a roadie who was the mechanic roadie. So, I mean, but we sold the van, bought a car, and finished the rest of the tour. <laughs> Inside. And actually, we were broke by the time we got to Reno again. And uh, 
the guy driving is like, you guys spent all that money? We're like, yeah. You know, he wanted two bottles of vodka. They wanted some cocaine. They wanted some weed. And, what do you mean? I don't smoke weed. You know, then we got <laughs> and drank. And they're like, what are we going to do now? It's like, we're going to go panhandle and make some more money and get to the next show. And that's what we did. You know, just one show after another. I see. And, old and we school. Made it, you know? old, old school, like I said. Yeah. Uh, right on. Well, but that was my anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she hopped trains for years. I didn't hop trains because I always had the van with the equipment. Right. And, I mean, the rest of the crew, like the old members, like that aren't in it now, is mainly because, like, one's got COPD, the other one. That's heroin addict, can't be around nothing. Right. I mean, I got cirrhosis stage four, but I'm just, I changed my, you know, everything else in my life, but then. And except, except the fact that now I'm taking this a lot more serious. I, you know, 30 years of playing with my ego, now I'm like, you know what? That was fun, but I ain't trying to get laid anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I get laid every night, but that's because she's my girlfriend. <laughs> that that shirt is all about, you know, the, I'm like I I don't I don't work out with my ego anymore. I don't play with my ego. It, it's just you you know you reach a certain age where you're just like that was dumb. Why did I do that? Why did I waste so much time on that? Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, in, in the last year that I haven't been able to drink, we have done more and our songs are like coming together so much better and easier than like the 30 years. I mean, we played and toured all over, but it was just like, just to see how crazy it could get, you know, and, yeah. you know, go home with a different girl, you know, whatever. You know, rock star in it, but it's like we weren't rock star. Right. We're I think it's just, to be, I just want to plug. We treated our livers and bass. our bodies like we were, but yeah. we didn't. Right. didn't. <laughs> really fucking. <laughs> well, I tell you what, guys. Uh, one more question. All right, you, you made it. We're almost done, and I want to thank you for your time and uh, taking the time to do this. Um, let's Thanks pretend. Yeah. No. Thank you for coming on. Let's pretend we're yeah. talking to new musicians, okay? Someone who comes up says, how do I be like you? <laughs> Basically, if, if you came up, if, 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 you know, little drunk rock came up and, <laughs> and said, you know, how do I, you know, how do I be like you? What's one piece of music advice that you wish someone had given you when you started in music? And don't say change your strings. You, you don't have to be drunk. Practice. Yes. That's, you don't have to be drunk to be a punk rapper. You don't have to stick stuff in your arms. It comes from your heart. Practice. That's all I'm doing. And practice. Like a lot. Like a lot. Make, yeah. it, make it your goal to practice every day if you can. I don't do it anymore, but I used to. <laughs> Play with people even if you fucking hate them because the music's still fun. Oh, also, yeah, don't stick to one genre. A lot of people like, I'm a metalhead. I'm a punk rocker. I only play country. Dude, play all the music you can, dude. Yeah. Straight up. And play all the instruments you can, too. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and listen to everything. Don't, don't refuse to uh, just be open. Because, like, there's, like, for example, I, on the scene around here, not going to name bands, but there's, like, 20 bands that all sound just alike because they all have the same two influences. They don't have, like, a plethora of like a dozen influences. They literally only listen to two bands and they all sound exactly alike. And there's nothing wrong Robert. with that, but you know, scratch out. <laughs> what do you tell your son when you got into music? Oh, uh, he does rap, so I just throw a few pills. <laughs> 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 so, but, Did you know I was in a rap band for a while too? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm here. And, uh, I'm I want to say on October, on October 7th at the dive bars with the Fun Killers, uh, 24 more beers, and what was Don't it? look at me because I don't know. Sin, I'm trying not to look at I forgot the last one. They're from Arizona. They'll be on the flyer. It's okay. With any luck, I'll have the flyer, you know, some somehow, you know, I'll have the flyer at the time that this interview gets posted, and I'll put it here now. Uh, Fun Killers, I've actually uh, I've already talked to them, and, and they're hopefully they're going to be on the channel doing an interview here uh, in person. Just schedules, cool. you know how it goes. 24 more really beers. Cool. Uh, is 24 more beers Vegas? Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check them out. Uh, I like the title. I like the name. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's why you know I grabbed them. I right got, on. Yeah, 24 beers. I, All I right. Well, the dive bar, I don't know, but like they have you do the whole show. Not at the dive bar anymore. I they got have... all the. Huh? All right. Uh, I don't know. The guy dive bar is like. Here's the date. You book it. You do everything. Oh yeah, they, like, they okay. do have they do do that. Yeah, but they do have sound people that will run sound for you that night. I think. So. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for watching, and definitely click the links down below so you can follow them on social media. And uh, I think are we going to have any music videos to tack on to the end of this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right on. It's so. Not, it's not a you know, it's uh, what do you call it? A clip shows a slideshow. Slideshow. Right on. Stick around for that. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I want to thank Anarchy for Assholes or A4A for coming on the show. And definitely October seventh, check them out at the dive bar with Fun Killers, Twenty Four Beers, and whatever that other band is. And um, in the meantime, if you want to be on the channel, either reviewed or interviewed, I've got an email address down there. Hit me up. If you want to support the channel, of course, room6.shop for merch. Um, we've got Patreon page. We've got, you know, CDs for sale. Other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, really appreciate it. It makes a difference. Please click down there. And remember to be amazing. And we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Bye. See you later. We'll see you in uh, October. Right on. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba. Ba-da-ba-ba-da-ba.